What is going on guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Colin Ross. Today we're going to be learning how to do a sick watch transition just like this. <laughs> So now that we're in After Effects, let's see what we're going to be working with today. You saw a quick little highlight. So here's a shot of Amir pulling up his hand. If you zoom in here on the watch face, you can see the time reveals the next layer. So that's what we're going to be focusing on accomplishing today. Before this gets started, I just want to say all the project files are in the description if you want to check them out and download them and potentially follow along. But just go ahead and drag your footage into the composition icon right here. This will bring it to a composition with all the attributes like your footage has. I'm just going to trim this up right here, you know, right before Amir starts to pull in the watch. So like right there, hit B on the keyboard that'll trim the composition right click trim comp to work area and then boom so I'm gonna find the beginning frame I want of this footage and it's somewhere around here right when the hair flips right there and I'm gonna hit alt left bracket right click that layer and hit time freeze frame I'm just gonna drag this footage over and turn it off for now because we don't need it and then right click and trim the comp to work area I'll leave a link in the description for Amir Zachary's Instagram page if you want to go check that out this is footage from a video he was working on he contacted me and wanted me to help out so I did this shot so that's why I'm gonna be showing you how to do it today but how are we gonna transform this into the first shot that we saw and the first answer like in most cases is motion tracking so what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna to want to motion track in Mocha because Mocha is a great motion tracker. Click your main source footage, go up to animation and click track in Mocha A. This is gonna open up Mocha. It's gonna create a Mocha project file with your footage in it. Click OK, this project up. Uh, we wanna go forward to the first frame where the watch is entirely in the frame and you wanna hit the X spline tool. Click once, click again, and this is gonna start creating a planar tracking mask. And then just draw a few points around your watch, just like this. Right click to end that mask. And then pretty much from there, Mocha is a really great tracker, so all you wanna do is hit track forwards and let it do its thing. If you click and drag, you can select multiple different splines and then click and drag that out, you know, because it, it isn't gonna be 100% perfect. So you're gonna have to make a few adjustments, maybe go, you know, track to the next frame. Um, drag it out. It looks like it's having a trouble with this shadow line. It's going to autofocus here. Sometimes it has trouble. Oh, didn't seem to have any trouble there. Just go ahead and track forwards from here. It's going to do a pretty great job at tracking your footage properly. It's a really great tracker. It's really awesome that it's built into Adobe After Effects. But let's fast forward through this process and I'll show you how to bring that back into After Effects. So once that's done, as you can see, it's, you know, moving along here, do, 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 and it's tracked very nicely. So I left out this first frame right here. So I just want to go back one frame and then highlight everything and then drag it down and then go back another frame and then just drag it off the screen. So as you can see, you bring the watch up and it comes into focus. What you want to do is you want to click export tracking data and you want to click the format and go over to After Effects transform data. Hit copy to clipboard, go back into After Effects, right click in your composition, create new null object. Make sure your null is selected and hit control V. And this is going to paste all that information into your scene. So as you can see, this posts all the information into your layer and tracks the watch pretty darn near perfectly. So this is gonna be the foundation for the effect. So now you have to parent things to this null object to make it look like it's actually there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is right click, create a new solid and it doesn't, it doesn't matter what color it is because we're just using it as an alpha layer to reveal our footage. And then I'm gonna hit right here the, and change it to the ellipse tool and draw a circle and then try and put it as best as I can on the watch face. This area is what the watch transition is going to show through. So we obviously don't want any of this metal rim. We just want the actual watch face. So I'm gonna drag this and then I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a 3D layer and then parent it to the sixth null. So as you can see, this is parented very well to the watch. Um, but as it's brought back down and there's kind of a 3D shift, it doesn't really pick that up. So I'm gonna go up here to the anchor rotation tool and change it to the middle of the watch. And then I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard and keyframe the position. Hit M on your keyboard and then click the mask path keyframe because we're also gonna be setting some keyframes to that. So hit U and all your keyframes will show up. And then basically right as Amir starts to put his hand down, just want to make a few changes here. I'm also going to bring the mask down, bring it in right here, you know, just matching the outline of the watch. It's not going to matter a whole lot because it is very motion blurred. And then, you know, just go forward, keep changing it. 
So this isn't going to be perfect and it's going to be very motion blurred, but you know, we're just trying to get the basic outline and this will make more sense in a second, but essentially we're using this as the alpha reveal for our footage just to make sure it's perfect and clean. So just keyframe these changes and try to match it best of your ability for every frame. So the end result should be an orange face exactly where your watch face should be. Now we're going to bring our freeze frame up to the top, click it back on and uh, we're going to also want to make this a 3D layer and then just parent it to the orange solid and then it's going to have some of the basic movement that it has which is also parented to the null right here make sure the orange solid is on top of the freeze frame click right here under the track mat and if you can't see it click toggle switch modes and then click alpha mat orange solid so it's going to make it so the only thing that shows through the freeze frame footage is that orange solid so as you can see now we have this parented to the scene and it looks like it's actually part of our watch face. So you can move this around and as you can see, the only thing that's gonna show is for this situation, obviously we wanted the girl's face and then you know scale it however you need it but you want it to be pretty big almost as big as your composition and as you can see it's still perfectly tracked right there i'm also going to take this orange solid and hit the feather and maybe feather it out like eight pixels i don't know why but with my new adobe update the text overlaps for some reason i don't know that i think that's just a bug that they need to fix but the feathering just kind of helps it smooth out a little bit as you can see it looks like this is part of the watch face now but how are we going to overlap the actual watch face so that the second hand can spin and reveal the next shot so what i did is i went onto google and found the watch face that Amir is using in this shot. But you also can just take a picture of your watch face close up because you might not always be able to find your specific watch face online. Luckily, I found a high quality version. So I drug that into its own composition. And then what you're going to want to do is duplicate that watch face JPEG, turn off the duplicated layer. If you double click your bottom watch face layer, it's going to bring you into the layer tab, go up to the clone stamp tool, and then you're going to paint out this hand. So basically, all you have to do here is click alt on the white part and then drag it over top. I'm not gonna cover this middle piece, just the hands. And this will make more sense in a second. And this is pretty easy on this watch, it might be a little more difficult for yours. Now that we got that cleared up, go back into the composition for the watch face and then turn back on the top layer, mask out the watch hand because we're gonna be animating this and we have to have it separated from the actual watch face. So boom, boom, boom. I'll make this one spin right here, close that off. I'm gonna rename this second hand and then I'm gonna duplicate that, hit M, delete that mask. And then I'm going to mask out the hour hand. Let me go in a little bit. And then this is very important. You wanna change the orientation of both hands to the middle of where they would actually be rotating. So if you hit Y, you can drag your rotation point. It's most important on the second hand. So drag this little thing here right to the middle. So then if you hit W and rotate it around, it looks like it's actually spinning on the watch hand. You also want to hit composition settings and make sure it lasts at least the length of your main composition. So I'm just going to hit 15 seconds to be safe. I have no idea how long it lasts. Also hit E on your bottom layer, click paint, and then drag out your clone stamp tools the entire length of the composition. So go ahead and drag your watch face composition into your main composition. Like the last layer, make it a 3D layer and then parent it to the null six. And at this point, you're gonna wanna mask out um, your actual watch face. Boom, boom, I'm just using the ellipse tool here. I'm also gonna hit F and then feather it out a few pixels, maybe like four, just to get that nice blend. So it's parented to the orange solid, which is also parented to the entire thing. And then obviously it's a little big, so I'm going to drag it down, scale it up to make these changes. Then obviously you want to get rid of the white, so go into your effects and presets and type in color key, and then drag this onto your watch face, and then hit your background color, and then just drag up the color tolerance until you get the effect that you like. I'm going to go up to like maybe like 70. Then maybe change the edge feather to like one just to make it a little nicer. So now you're just positioning it to look like it's on the watch scene. So I'm going to drop down and hit a keyframe for the position, the orientation, and pretty much just everything. So if I make any changes, what you also want to do is go ahead and drag your freeze frame back in Z space. And this is going to create a slight parallax. And then also if you create any rotation to the watch face, you're not going to see any issues. So I'm going to try and match the face orientation with the actual watch. 
This is the part where it's gonna take a lot of finagling to get the desired effect that you want. But for me, this is looking pretty good. We're gonna add motion blur at the end, which is gonna help out a lot. But as you can see, I whip up the watch and then bring it closer to the camera. And it looks like the new watch face is the girl. But now the question is, how are we gonna make the second hand reveal through to the next layer? It's important that your freeze frame layer or the next scene that you're transitioning to, you shoot something, you shoot the subject somewhat far away because you want to retain the scale here so that when you zoom in and reveal the layer, it's almost at least at the edge of the frame. If you have something huge, you obviously would have to scale this layer way down, which it does look cool right here. But then as you reveal with the mask, there's gonna be a black edge right here where this layer ends. So if you shoot farther away so that it's still framed right, but it's easiest when your next scene completely fills the composition. And this will make more sense after I show you how we're gonna reveal to the next layer. So then it's all about deciding when and how fast you want your watch to spin. Just double click the watch face composition and then go to the beginning frame and and for your second hand, go ahead and hit R and then hit the stopwatch. So I'm gonna start the watch second hand like right here and then I'm gonna go forward maybe like five seconds. So then you just drag forward five seconds so then it's gonna, you know, move like it actually would. But then I want it to start spinning faster to reveal the layer. So then I'll go forward maybe another four seconds and I'll spin it twice around. This is just all about adjusting for your composition and you know your needs, what you think looks the best. So I'm gonna have it spin you know, for like one second and then it's just gonna start to quickly speed up. And if you go ahead and render that out in the main composition, you can see it's slowly going and then it starts to really pick up speed right there. I'm also just gonna duplicate the second hand because then it's gonna show through better to this main composition. Otherwise the color key starts to key out. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and redo that. Um, and then you'll see the second hand better. Second hand slowly going and then it starts to pick up speed. And that's now where we're going to reveal into the next layer. So essentially all we have to do here is go to the orange solid and create a new mask and click here and then hit all the way up here and then make sure it lines up with the second hand right there and then hit G. You're basically making a small, tiny sliver. And this is adding that orange solid back on top. So as we reveal this mask with the second hand, it's actually going to reveal the layer. So if you hit M, uh, go ahead and hit a keyframe for the mask path right before the second hand starts to spin. Go back one frame and then just drag this out of here so it doesn't come into play until the exact moment you need it. And then you just have to go frame by frame and drag the keyframe down. I'm also gonna hit F and then, you know, just feather this out, maybe four pixels, and then hit M again, back to the keyframes, and then you just have to go frame by frame with the watch second hand to reveal. Boom, boom. Just going, just going. You know, you can maybe try and do a few, and as you can see, hit another, hit G, and then create another mask point, and then just drag it out so it kind of rotates like that, boom, boom. But as you can see, there's a few interpolation keyframes that are a little messed up. Just drag it down to match. Literally just keyframing every single moment to match up with that second hand. Boom, create another point. Boom, up with the second hand. You kind of have to zoom out a little too so you can see the whole entire mask. That matched up pretty well. Boom. Create another point. And then up to the top. And then right there it completes. And then what you wanna do is just take that sliver out as it completes so the whole frame shows. So now it's starting to reveal the layer of our next scene as the second hand spins, which is a pretty cool effect. One thing to kind of take note of is your orange solid might not completely cover. There might be a little edges. So there's gonna be a little edges here. So what I'm gonna do then is just go into the composition, drag your main composition down into a new composition. As Amir starts to bring his hand closer to the camera, I'm just gonna scale in slightly before it even starts to move. I'm also gonna hit P, then hit U and then drag it so the watch is still in the center. So then as it's in its own composition, when the watch hand reveals, the entire frame is there. Um, you'll just have to scale, depending on how big of an edge you get with your background footage, you know, this is where it comes into play with what I was talking about earlier, making sure your subject is far enough away so that it still uh, looks decently sized in your watch. This is gonna take some experimentation, it's not gonna be like a one-time thing, but as you can see now, when it reveals, there's no edge. We're gonna go back into our main composition now. This effect is starting to 
take shape and it's almost done. We have a few more steps to polish it off and clean it off. As you can see, you know, this is the edge I was talking about. That's what we took away with. So obviously the obstacle now is we have to play our main footage. And also what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and hit T on your watch face and then click the stopwatch and then as the frame completes right here i'm just going to change the watch face opacity to zero so then so that's just going to make that fade away as the whole layer is revealed you can do this in a cooler way but this is just what i found looked the cleanest in my opinion so now the question is how are we going to start playing our footage once it reveals the mask this is a pretty simple thing to do all you have to do is just duplicate your frozen layer right when it finishes revealing duplicate it um, bring it up to the top right here and then click alt left bracket that's going to it up so it just starts right there so hit t on your keyboard and drag the opacity down to 50 percent for this layer and then right click and click time and disable the time remap and then after here you want to drag this layer back and then slide it forward until it matches with the opacity of the previous layer right there so that layer is not going to be time remapped anymore and right when it hits it's going to start playing and now you i disabled the opacity just so you could see it better but now re-enable it to 100 percent and then boom your footage starts playing. And then obviously you just have to extend your composition settings to be however long you need them to be for that second clip. So I'll extend that out. So now if we preview, we can see the final effect. Watch is spinning, spins, reveals, and then starts playing the next clip. So that's gonna do it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I think this is a pretty unique transition that hasn't really been done before. So hope you like this. If you did, drop a like and subscribe. I'm creating a new video every single day for the rest of 2017. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace by, peace, peace. Thank <laughs> you.